Hey, welcome to the shop. Today I'm gonna to go over eight basic measuring tools that you might use when you get started with welding and fabrication. Now, when I'm fabricating in my shop, I spend more time measuring, cutting, and fitting than I do welding most of the time. But I thought it would be worth going over some of the basic measuring equipment that I have. Now, this isn't even half of the measuring tools that I have, but these are some of the basics that you might wanna get as you start out, or at least be aware of that you could get down the road. I'll put links down in the description to all of these products, so let's get started. So the first tool up is a tape measure, and this is really useful for cutting stock to length or laying out parts. Um, I've had a lot of cheap ones like this in the past, but I'll show you a few features that I like on a nicer one like this. Um, one of those is the white background, I think is a little bit easier to read for me. And it also, if you flip it over, has metric scale. So for those of us in the United States, it's nice to have both options. Now, it has a regular locking lever to hold the tape in place, but if you just want it out temporarily, there's a button on the side that can hold it in place, or there's one on the bottom. So these are a few features I really like. The next up is a pie tape, and this is a special kind of tape measure that has a regular scale on the front, but on the back side, the scale is stretched out by a factor of pi, so you can wrap it around round items, and you can see we're passing the one inch diameter mark there, and you get the diameter um, or the distance across the circle directly. So right here, you can see that aligns with 1.90 to 1.91. So it's gonna be somewhere around 1.905. And you check that and that's pretty close. With that stretched out scale, you can really get an accurate reading by eye. Um, if you wrap it around uh, something larger, it's also pretty handy for that. If you have a pipe or a tank or a tire in this case, you can directly get that diameter reading right like that. Next up is a speed square, and this is handy for a lot of things. You can use it to draw perpendicular lines, to draw lines at 45 degrees, or to uh, draw lines at pretty much any angle by pivoting around that point, you can line up with whatever number is along the long side, um, and this is at 20 degrees right there. And so that means that that line will be 20 degrees off of perpendicular, or in other words, those two lines have 20 degree angle between them. Now if you go up here, uh, there's a ruler on the side, you can mark any length, um, but it also has quarter inch serrations that you can go ahead and uh, stick your marker right in and then drag it along. And when you do this, you can get an offset line really quickly and easily. So I like that feature on this particular one. And another uh, kind of fun thing has a bottle opener built in. So that could be, it could be useful. Now this is a smaller speed square that I came across and I thought it'd be really handy because there's a lot of times when it's just hard to get a larger one like that in. It has the same markings and angles uh, on it as the traditional one, but another feature I really liked is there are known lengths of these legs at the bottom. And so if you wanted to make a line that's offset by a quarter inch, you just use the one side, or offset by three eighths of an inch, you use the other. So that's gonna be really handy, I think. Now for more precise measurements, um, we'll go on to our next item, and that's a protractor right here. And when you uh, pivot it around, it gives you the angle between the two arms. And so I'll just uh, show how that's uh, used here on this tubing. Um, you can get the, the angle that this is put in at, and you can use it for round tubing or square tubing like this. I also like to use this to verify um, miter joints. Now you can see there's a burr at the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and deburr this off camera, but I just wanted to note that if you have a burr with any measurement uh, technique, you'll probably be off if you're measuring to that. So um, now that it's deburred, I'll check it, and even though it looked like 45 degrees, it's actually 50. So I need to correct something with my saw so I'm not filling a big gap, and you can see that this is verified here on my speed square. Um, also, along the edge, there's a scale, and I don't really use that, but it could come in handy for you. Now this little block, I use these quite a bit, I have a few of them, and uh, it's really handy, basically gives you the angle um, that it is off of level. And you can see that this surface isn't level, it's best if you have a level surface, but if you don't, you can zero it out like that, but if you tip it, you know, one way or another, um, or rotate it rather, then you won't get an accurate reading. So make sure to just keep it aiming in the same direction if you zero it out. But we'll check right here, and this can be really handy for fabrication when you um, don't wanna hold on to a, both ends of a protractor, you can't fit them in a particular spot, you just hold that with one hand. 
Next up is a sheet metal gauge, and this is just for checking the thickness of material, and it comes in really handy. It's easy to use. You just see which slot the material fits in. That's the, the tightest slot it'll fit in. And so this is 1 8 inch material. You can see fits in that slot. Um, we'll try it with some quarter inch there. And, and that fits really well. And I like to take this with me to the steel yard when I buy remnants to, to see what size I'm getting. Now at the bottom, this is for checking MIG welding wire. And these are some of the common sizes. And you can see this is uh, 030 wire, 30 thousandths of an inch because um, it fits in there so that can help you with your settings. Hey, if you haven't tuned in before, my name's Tim. I'm a welding engineer and I make videos about welding and fabrication from my side hustle shop in my garage. So check out the other videos on my channel and some of the topics I have coming up are a series on TIG welding, uh, modular fixturing, TIG brazing, as well as a few projects in the CNC machine build. So if you're interested in any of that, go ahead and hit that subscribe now. Also, the product links I have down in the description provide a small commission to the channel to help support making these videos. So if you do decide to buy these products and use the links below, I appreciate it. Next up are calipers, and there's really three types of calipers, and we'll talk about each one. These are vernier calipers, and my dad gave me these a long time ago and made me learn to read them before I could use digital ones. But basically, those lines, when they align from the bottom scale to the upper scale, you can get a really accurate reading. Now with dial calipers, you use a combination of the number down there with the number on the dial, and digital ones just give you the number directly. Now digital calipers are inexpensive enough these days, I'd recommend just going with those right out of the gate. Um, I hold them like that, and make sure that when you start out uh, that you have clean anvils on them, and then go ahead and check and make sure that it zeroes out and returns to zero so that you'll get an accurate reading. Now there's a few ways to use them. The first is to measure outer diameters, and so you use those anvils right there, and you can get a pretty accurate outer diameter measurement. The next is to check inner diameters, so you use the others on the top there to get in, and the last is to check uh, depths, so you can use that to check the depth of a blind hole, just like this. So lots of uses for calipers. Um, another feature on this is it has a fraction function, so if you're used to coming from carpentry and used to working in fractions, you can do that, or you can change it to work in millimeters, which just makes a lot of sense. Now last of all is a height gauge, and this is really handy. It basically tells you um, the height off of a reference surface, so I'll kind of show you what I mean with that. So let's say I had this piece of tubing here, and I wanted to um, set up a, a fixture to um, put this uh, piece at an angle and have it aligned with the center of that tubing. So I need to know the difference between the two. So I'll set the height stand here and I'll press a button and that will set the height to zero. Now when I go up from that, I'll know how high something is off of that surface and I can check there and it looks like it's about a half inch. So I need a quarter inch shim underneath this. So I'll place a quarter inch shim there and then I'll go back over um, to that smaller uh, piece and I'll check the height and set it to zero there and then I'll check and see and now I'm a quarter inch off so I know that it's aligned pretty close to the center. Now I could do that with calipers like this but you're really just checking one point so if I check multiple points with the height stand I'll know that not only is it at the right height but it's sitting uh, parallel with the edge. Hey well thanks for tuning in today. If you liked what you saw here go ahead and hit that thumbs up and let us know down in the comments below what you'd like to see in future videos and what some of your favorite measuring tools are. And we'll see you next time.